Xiangji, courtesy name Yu, better known as Xiang Yu, was a prominent warlord in the late Qin dynasty. A noble of Xiaqang, Xiang Yu was granted the title of Duke of Lu by King Huai II of the insurgent Chu state in 208 BC. The following year, he led the rebel forces to victory at the Battle of Julu against the Qin armies led by Zhang Han. After the fall of the Qin dynasty, Xiang Yu proclaimed himself overlord of Western Chu and ruled a vast area of land covering parts of present-day Shanxi, Henan, Hubei, Hunan and Jiangsu, with Peng Cheng as his capital. He engaged Lu Bang, the founding emperor of the Han dynasty, in a long struggle for power, known as the Chu Han Contention, which concluded with his eventual defeat at the Battle of Gexia. He committed suicide at the bank of the Wu River. Names and titles. Xiang Yu's family name was Xiang while his given name was Ji and his courtesy name was Yu. He is best known as Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu is popularly known as Shi Chu Ba Wang, which has been translated as Overlord of Western Chu, Hegemon King of Western Chu, Conqueror of Western Chu, King of Kings of Western Chu, and other renditions. This title is sometimes simplified to Ba Wang without the link to Western Shu. Since Xiang Yu's death, the term Ba Wang has come to be used specifically to refer to him. Xiang Yu's subjects sometimes address him as Xiang Wang, which literally means King Xiang. Biography Birth and family background There are two accounts of Xiang Yu's family background. The first claimed that Xiang Yu was from the House of Mi, the royal family of the Chu state in the Zhou dynasty. His ancestors were granted the land of Xiang by the King of Chu and had since adopted Xiang as their family name. The other account claimed that Xiang Yu was a descendant of a noble clan from the Lu state and his family had served in the Chu military for generations. Xiang Yu's grandfather Xiang Yan was a well-known general who led the Chu army in resisting the Qin invaders led by Wang Jian, and was killed in action when Qin conquered Chu in 223 BC. Xiang Yu was born in 232 BC in the late Warring States period when the Qin state started unifying the other six major states. According to the descendants of the Xiang family in Suqian, Xiang Yu's father was Xiang Chao, Xiang Yan's eldest son. Xiang Yu was raised by his elder uncle Xiang Liang because his father died early. In 221 BC, when Xiang Yu was about 11 years old, the Qin state unified China and established the Qin dynasty. Xiang Yu had a double pupil in one of his eyes just like the mythical Emperor Shun and Duke Wen of Jin. He was thus seen as an extraordinary person because his unique double pupil was a mark of a king or sage in Chinese tradition. Xiang Yu was slightly taller than Eight Kai and possessed unusual physical strength as he could lift a ding. Early days in his younger days, Xiang Yu was instructed in scholarly arts and swordsmanship but he did not manage to master what he was taught, and his uncle Xiang Liang was not very satisfied with him. Xiang Yu said, Books are only useful in helping me remember my name. Mastering swordsmanship allows me to face only one opponent so it's not worth learning. I want to learn how to defeat thousands of enemies. Hence, his uncle tried to educate him in military strategies and the art of wars instead. But Xiang Yu stopped learning after he had grasped the main ideas. Xiang Liang was disappointed with his nephew, who showed no sign of motivation or apparent talent apart from his great strength. So he gave up and let Xiang Yu decide his own future. When Xiang Yu grew older, Xiang Liang killed someone so they fled to Wu to evade the authorities. At the time, Qin Shi Huang was on an inspection tour in that area and Xiang Yu and his uncle watched the emperor's procession pass by. Xiang Yu said, I can replace him. Xiang Liang was shocked and immediately covered his nephew's mouth with his hand. Since then, Xiang Liang began to see his nephew in a different light. 
revolution against the Qin dynasty in 209 BC, during the reign of Qin Erxi. Peasant rebellions erupted throughout China to overthrow the Qin dynasty, plunging China into a state of anarchy. Yin Tong, the administrator of Kuaiji, wanted to start a rebellion as well, so he invited Xiang Liang to meet him and discuss their plans. However, the Zhangs lured Yin Tong into a trap and killed him instead, with Xiang Yu personally striking down hundreds of Yin's men. Xiang Liang initiated the rebellion himself and rallied about 8,000 men to support him. Xiang Liang proclaimed himself administrator of Kuaiji while appointing Xiang Yu as a general. Xiang Liang's revolution force grew in size until it was between 60,000 to 70,000. In 208 BC, Xiang Liang installed Mi Xin as King Huai II of Chu to rally support from those eager to help him overthrow the Qin dynasty and restore the former Chu state. Xiang Yu distinguished himself as a competent martial and mighty warrior on the battlefield while participating in the battles against Qin forces. Later that year, Xiang Liang was killed at the Battle of Dingtao against the Qin army led by Zhang Han and the military power of Chu fell into the hands of the king and some other generals. In the winter of 208 BC, another rebel force claiming to restore the Zhao state, led by Zhao Xie, was besieged in Handan by Zhang Han. Zhao Xie requested for reinforcements from Chu. King Huai II granted Xiang Yu the title of Duke of Lu, and appointed him as a second-in-command to Song Yi, who was ordered to lead an army to reinforce Zhao Xie. At the same time, the king placed Lu Bang in command of another army to attack Guanzhong, the heartland of Qin. The king promised that whoever managed to enter Guanzhong first will be granted the title King of Guanzhong. Battle of Julu The Chu army led by Song Yi and Xiang Yu reached Anyang, some distance away from Julu, where Zhao Xie's forces had retreated to. Song Yi ordered the troops to lay camp there for 46 days and he refused to accept Xiang Yu's suggestion to proceed further. Xiang Yu took Song Yi by surprise in a meeting and killed him on a charge of treason. Song Yi's other subordinates were afraid of Xiang Yu so they let him become the acting commander-in-chief. Xiang Yu sent a messenger to inform King Huai II and the king approved Zhang's command. In 207 BC, Xiang Yu's army advanced towards Julu and he sent Yingbu and Zhong Limo to lead the 20,000-strong vanguard army to cross the river and attack the Qin forces led by Zhang Han, while he followed behind with the remaining majority of the troops. After crossing the river, Xiang Yu ordered his men to sink their boats and destroy all but three days' worth of rations. In order to force his men to choose between prevailing against overwhelming odds within three days or die trapped before the walls of the city with no supplies or any hope of escape, Despite being heavily outnumbered, Chu forces scored a great victory after nine engagements, defeating the 300,000-strong Qin army. After the battle, other rebel forces, including those not from Chu, came to join Xiang Yu out of admiration for his martial valor. When Xiang Yu received them at the gate, the rebel chiefs were so fearful of him that they sank to their knees and did not even dare to look up at him. Zhang Han sent his deputy Sima Xin to Zhanyang to request for reinforcements and supplies from the Qin imperial court. However, the eunuch Zhao Gao deceived the emperor and the emperor dismissed Zhang Han's request. Zhao Gao even sent assassins to kill Sima Xin when the latter was returning to Zhang Han's camp, but Sima managed to escape alive. In dire straits, Zhang Han and his 200,000 troops eventually surrendered to Xiang Yu in the summer of 207 BC. Xiang Yu perceived the surrendered Qin troops as disloyal and a liability, and had them executed by burying them alive at Xin'an. Zhang Han, along with Sima Xin, and Dong Yi were spared from death.
Xiang Yu appointed Zhang Han as King of Yong, while Sima Xin and Dong Yi were respectively conferred the titles of King of Sai and King of Dai. Feast at Honggate After his victory at the Battle of Julu, Xiang Yu prepared for an invasion on Guanzhong, the heartland of the Qin dynasty. In the winter of 207 BC, the last Qin ruler Xing surrendered to Lu Bang in Zhanyang, bringing an end to the Qin dynasty. When Xiang Yu arrived at Hangu Pass, the eastern gateway to Guanzhong, he saw that the pass was occupied by Lu Bang's troops, a sign that Guanzhong was already under Liu's control. Cao Wu Shang, a subordinate of Lu Bang, sent a messenger to see Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu was furious after hearing that. At that time, he had about 400,000 troops under his command while Lu Bang only had a quarter of that number. As strongly encouraged by his advisor Fan Zheng, Xiang Yu invited Lu Bang to attend a feast at Honggate and plotted to kill Lu during the banquet. However, Xiang Yu later listened to his uncle Xiang Bo and decided to spare Lu Bang. Lu Bang escaped during the banquet under the pretext of going to the latrine. Xiang Yu paid no attention to Lu Bang's presumptive title and led his troops into Zhanyang in 206 BC. He ordered the execution of Xing and his family, as well as the destruction of the Etpang Palace by fire. It was said that Xiang Yu would leave behind a trail of destruction in the places he passed by, and the people of Guanzhong were greatly disappointed with him. Despite advice from his subjects to remain in Guanzhong and continue with his conquests, Xiang Yu was insistent on returning to his homeland in Chu. He said to not return home when one has made his fortune is equivalent to walking on the streets at night in glamorous outfits. Who would notice that, one of his followers said. It is indeed true when people say that the men of Chu are apes dressed in human clothing. Xiang Yu had that man boiled alive when he heard that. Insult. Division of the empire after the downfall of the Qin dynasty. Xiang Yu offered King Huai II the more honorable title of Emperor Yi of Chu and announced his decision to divide the former Qin Empire. Xiang Yu declared himself hegemon king of Western Chu and ruled nine commanderies in the former Liang and Chu territories, with his capital at Pengcheng. In the spring of 2006 BC, Xiang Yu divided the former Qin Empire into the 18 kingdoms to be granted to his subordinates and some leaders of the former rebel forces. He moved some of the rulers of other states to more remote areas and granted the land of Guanzhong to the three surrendered Qin generals. Ignoring Emperor Yi's earlier promise to appoint Liu Bang as king of that region, Liu Bang was relocated to the remote Hanzhong area and given the title of King of Han. Xiang Yu appointed several generals from the rebel coalition as vassal kings, even though these generals were subordinates of other lords, who should rightfully be the kings in place of their followers. Xiang Yu also left out some other important rebel leaders who did not support him earlier, but did contribute to the overthrow of Qin. In winter, Xiang Yu moved Emperor Yi to the remote area of Chen County, effectively sending the puppet emperor into exile. At the same time, he issued a secret order to the vassal kings in that area and had the emperor assassinated during his journey in 205 BC. The emperor's death was later used by Liu Bang as political propaganda to justify his war against Xiang Yu. Shortly after the death of Emperor Yi, Xiang Yu had Han Cheng put to death and seized Han's lands for himself. Several months later, Ti and Rong took control over the three Qis from their respective kings and reinstated Ti and Fu as the king of Qi, but he took over the throne himself afterwards. Similarly, Chen Yu, a former vice-chancellor of Zhao, led an uprising against the king of Changshan, Zhang Er, and seized Zhang's domain and reinstalled Zhao Xie as the king of Zhao. Chu Han contention in 2006 BC, Lu Bang led his forces to attack Guanzhong. At that time, Xiang Yu was at war with Qi and did not focus on resisting the Han forces. 
The following year, Liu Bang formed an alliance with another five kingdoms and attacked Western Chu with a 560,000-strong army, capturing Xiang Yu's capital of Pengcheng. Upon hearing that, Xiang Yu led 30,000 men to attack Liu Bang and defeated the latter at the Battle of Pengcheng. With the Han army suffering heavy casualties, Liu Bang managed to escape after his defeat with Xiang Yu's troops on pursuit. Han troops retreated to Xingyang and defended the city firmly, preventing Chu forces from advancing west any further, but only managed to hold on until 204 BCE. Liu Bang's subordinate Ji Xin disguised himself as his lord and surrendered to Xiang Yu, buying time for Liu Bang to escape. When Xiang Yu learnt that he had been fooled, he was furious and had Ji Xin burnt to death. After the fall of Xing Yang, Chu and Han forces were divided on two fronts along present-day Henan. However, Xiang Yu's forces were not faring well on the battlefront north of the Yellow River, as the Han army led by Han Xin defeated his troops in every single battle. At the same time, Liu Bang's ally Li Peng Yu led his men to harass Xiang Yu's rear. By 203 BC, the tide had turned in favor of Han. Xiang Yu managed to capture Liu Bang's father after a year-long siege and he threatened to boil Liu's father alive if Liu refused to surrender. Liu Bang remarked that he and Xiang Yu were oath brothers, so if Xiang killed Liu's father, he would be guilty of patricide. Xiang Yu requested for an armistice, known as the Treaty of Hong Canal, and returned the hostages he captured back to Liu Bang as part of their agreement. The treaty divided China into East and West under the Chu and Han domains respectively. Shortly after, as Xiang Yu was retreating eastwards, Liu Bang renounced the treaty and led his forces to attack Western Chu. Liu Bang sent messengers to Han Xin and Peng Yu, requesting for their assistance in forming a three-pronged attack on Xiang Yu. But Han Xin and Peng Yu did not mobilize their troops and Liu Bang was defeated by Xiang Yu at the Battle of Guling. Liu Bang retreated and reinforced his defenses, while sending emissaries to Han Xin and Peng Yu, promising to grant him fiefs and titles of vassal kings if they would join him in attacking Western Chu. Defeat and downfall in 2002 BC, Han armies led by Liu Bang, Han Xin and Peng Yu attacked Western Chu from three sides and trapped Xiang Yu's army, which was low on supplies, at Gaixia. Liu Bang ordered his troops to sing folk songs from the Chu region to create a false impression that Xiang Yu's native land had been conquered by Han forces. The morale of the Chu army plummeted and many of Xiang Yu's troops deserted in despair. Xiang Yu sank into a state of depression and he composed the Song of Gexia. His concubine consort Yu committed suicide. The next morning, Xiang Yu led about 800 of his remaining elite cavalry on a desperate attempt to break out of the encirclement, with 5,000 enemy troops pursuing them. After crossing the Huai River, Xiang Yu was only left with a few hundred soldiers. They were lost in Yinling and Xiang Yu asked for directions from a farmer, who directed him wrongly to a swamp. When Xiang Yu reached Dongcheng, only 28 men were left with the Han troops still following him. Xiang Yu made a speech to his men, saying that his downfall was due to heaven's will and not his personal failure. After that, he led a charge out of the encirclement, killing one Han general in the battle. Xiang Yu then split his men into three groups to confuse the enemy and induce them to split up as well to attack the three groups. Xiang Yu took the Han troops by surprise again and slew another enemy commander, inflicting about 100 casualties on the enemy, while he only lost two men. Death Xiang Yu retreated to the bank of the Wu River and the ferryman at the ford prepared a boat for him to cross the river, strongly encouraging him to do so because Xiang Yu still had the support of the people from his homeland in the south. Xiang Yu said that he was too ashamed to return home and face his people because none of the first 8,000 men from Jiang Dong who followed him on his conquests survived. He refused to cross and ordered his remaining men to dismount, asking the ferryman to take his warhorse, Dewey, back home. 
Xiang Yu and his men made a last stand against wave after wave of Han forces until only Xiang himself was left alive. Xiang Yu continued to fight on and it is claimed he slew over 100 enemy soldiers, but he had also sustained several wounds all over his body. Just then, Xiang Yu saw an old friend Lu Mitong among the Han soldiers, and he said to Lu, I heard that the King of Han has placed a price of 1,000 gold and the title of Wan Hu Marquis on my head. Take it then, on account of our friendship, Xiang Yu then committed suicide by slitting his throat with his sword, and a brawl broke out among the Han soldiers at the scene due to the reward offered by Lu Bang, and Xiang Yu's body was said to be dismembered and mutilated in the fight. The reward was eventually claimed by Lu Matong and five others. After Xiang Yu's death, a Western Chu surrendered and China was united under Liu Bang's rule, marking the victory of the Han Dynasty. Liu Bang held a grand state funeral for Xiang Yu in Gucheng, with the ceremony befitting Zhang's title, Duke of Liu. Xiang Yu's relatives were spared from death, including Xiang Bo, who saved Liu Bang's life at the feast at Hong Gate, and they were granted Marquis titles.